Welcome, my name is Corinne Waldo. I'm the, pu I'm the public health, I'm the economic development director for the Boulder Chamber. I've been on a lot of these calls and I feel like I'm part of public health these days. Um, I wanna thank you for joining us uh, for the new combined office, field services slash real estate and manufacturing sessions. Uh, we hope that these combined sessions will still get you the information you need, but also provide you opportunities to um, give Q&A. I will be asking you some questions today about what you'd like to see on future webinars, some resources that you, um, that you may need, and, and which ones you are already using. If you have questions, please put them in the Q&A feature or in the chat. Um, I'm also open to you raising your hand and us promoting you to be able to speak um, because we have, we have a consolidated number of people on today's call. All of the recordings and information and resources that are provided will be sent out to the entire group afterwards. We've, we've had many watches of these videos and I think um, they continue to provide useful information <clears throat> for you as you open your business. At this time, I'm going to pass it off to Jesse Rounds with Boulder County Public Health. Thanks, Corinne. Uh, so I'm just gonna quickly go through uh, some updates to Safer at Home, about Safer at Home, about our situation in the county, and um, then we'll jump into uh, um, industry-specific uh, updates, and then we'll get to Q&A as quickly as possible. Uh, so just a little bit about the timeline uh, of the last couple weeks and what's been happening. Uh, as of June 1st, uh, the state extended Safer at Home through June 30th. Uh, on that same day, they permitted short-term rentals. Um, and then they announced that they were going to be taking feedback that would be due on the 3rd for houses of worship, um, personal recreation, outdoor recreation, and personal services. On June 4th, they released an updated uh, public health order regarding those. And then on June 6th, they updated again with some more details. Uh, and we'll be going over some of those today. Uh, in terms of the long-term outlook for uh, the county and the state, uh, Safer at Home is here to stay and it will evolve. Um, as you've seen over the last month and a half, uh, Safer at Home has changed um, to try to expand uh, and open more businesses and do it in a safe fashion. Um, and this is gonna be the way it is until we see a vaccine or an effective treatment. And that's likely to be months. Uh, and I think it's really important to understand that the reason that we're doing this slowly, the reason the state's being cautious is that COVID-19 is still here. It's just as contagious as it was in March. Um, and so that's why the Safer at Home order really stresses that it's best to stay at home as much as possible. Um, take advantage of, of businesses being open, but be aware that being home uh, and limiting contact with others is probably your best bet for limiting the spread. Um, just and two, two notes about the public health orders and how to comply with them. Compliance is obligatory. The state's orders are uh, requirements uh, for each business. Um, and if you have questions about specific parts of the orders, please contact an attorney. Um, we can help you with general guidance. We can give you, we can help you understand what the order means. But if you have questions about how to comply or whether a plan you have complies, contact an attorney, they can go through the specifics of that with you. In terms of face coverings, the Boulder County face covering order is still in effect. Uh, and um, really that means when you're indoors in a business, in a public uh, facility or in a business, you need to be wearing a face mask. Uh, when you're outdoors, if you cannot maintain six feet of distance, then you should be wearing a face covering. And that's led to this saying, when in doubt, bring it out. Wear a mask when you're outside uh, because you, it's, it's very hard to tell if you are going to be in a situation where you can't maintain that six feet of distance. Um, the face covering guidance um, we're providing on our website uh, is broken down uh, into that for employees and for patrons. It's a, it's a nice graphic and I'm not sure if I can bring it up here. Um, I may try later. Uh, but 
basically we have these two posters that you can find on our website and I'll give you a link to that in a minute um, that really break down when, who and when uh, face covering should be worn. Uh, and we also uh, updated our face covering script. We got a lot of comments that it was very uh, basic and didn't really apply to the experiences of uh, business owners who were having to interact with people who maybe didn't want to or didn't feel comfortable wearing a mask. And so this new face covering script really gets at some of the nuance of um, the face covering order. So where to go for information and where can you find those face covering scripts and, and graphics? That's on our website, boco.org slash forward slash COVID-19 business. Uh, that's a, it's a great resource. It's got a lot of information. It's got links to state resources. It's got some resources that we've developed uh, both in concert with uh, the Chamber of Commerce and internally. Um, the state's website, covid19.colorado.gov, is a great resource. Uh, they update as quickly as they can. Sometimes they're a little bit behind, uh, but they do update that regularly with the latest guidance. Uh, and that's where you're gonna get uh, both the original order as written and then their interpretation of their own order. Um, these other resources are great places to get information like the Chamber of Commerce, the Small Business Development Center, your industry associations, but also uh, Energize Colorado is a great resource for materials, masks, gloves, cleaning supplies. Um, and uh, sort of the, the other thing I would mention about industry associations, we've been pushing these for a while. Your, your fellow business owners are the best who can tell you uh, ideas that they've had for uh, complying and, and resources that they know about that maybe we don't know about as well. Um, so a resource spotlight, um, just again, these two websites, covid19.colorado.gov uh, has it broken down by industry and it's really uh, gonna be helpful for you to go to that for your industry and see all the details about complying there. And then our website again. Outbreaks. Um, if two or more of your employees are confirmed or suspected to have COVID-19 in a 14-day period, that's considered an outbreak. Uh, and um, at that, well, even before then, if you have a single employee that uh, is confirmed, let the county know, Boulder County Public Health, uh, our epidemiological team will reach out to that employee and work with that employee to make sure that they are safe and that they are cared for. Uh, but um, when you reach two employees, um, that's considered an outbreak. And uh, we ask that you fill out this uh, CDPHE COVID-19 form that gets shared with our department and also with the state. Um, the epidemiological team works with the patient, your, your coworker, your employee uh, who is sick. Our team, the business liaison team, will work with you uh, at your business to try and figure out a way to stay open, to keep operating, uh, but to stay safe. And that's really our goal uh, through this outbreak uh, monitoring system. Uh, so this has been a very big uh, topic of conversation, variances. Um, a variance is a, um, it's, it's what we, it's the county asking the state to, uh, to, to vary from the public health order as applied to the whole state based on factors specific to our county. It is, it comes from the county itself, not from individual businesses, and we wouldn't be requesting per individual business, we'd be requesting for the whole county um, to try and normalize across industries so that there isn't a, a rule for offices and hospitality and field services it's a, it's a, it would be a one size fits all. This is what we're going for across the, the county. And it's based on our understanding of uh, the current situation with respect to COVID-19 and the requests of business. And that's really where I wanted to go to with, in terms of we're asking for your feedback. We do not have that method of obtaining your feedback yet. It's likely to be an online form where we reach out to you, say, please fill out our form tell us about the barriers that you're seeing for your business and then we will 
try to come up with a solution that, that crosses all industries to address that concern. Uh, and I think um, it's important to note that uh, once we craft a variance, the, the variance basically is a, an altered public health order that would be specific to Boulder County. Uh, and so it needs to be approved not only by uh, the county commissioners, uh, but it also needs to go to all of the hospital CEOs in Boulder County for them to approve our, our varying from the state public health order. Um, and so that can take some time. And then the state does review it and it takes about two weeks for the state to review it. So we're going to try and stand this up pretty quickly, but we want it to be comprehensive. And we, uh, we are really looking for your input and we will reach out to you with that input tool soon. And next up is Lalo. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Lalo Shosh, and um, I'm stepping in uh, for Matt. I'm uh, one of the Boulder County Public Health liaisons regarding office space and special events. Um, so office space has, um, it's the guidelines have stayed pretty consistent in the last several orders. Um, there was some new language um, brought up in the sixth amended order regarding specific symptoms. Um, there, I know that there were some questions that come that came up previously. Um, if since this is allergy season, if a worker you know comes to work and and is displaying some of these symptoms, how do we know it's allergies instead of COVID nineteen? Um, so the state did put out some some specifics. Um, but uh, of course, uh, always err on the side of uh, precaution. And if someone is sick, please require those, those employees to stay home. Um, whether they're showing symptoms uh, or signs of sickness, um, some of the specifics that they put out recently with this last amendment is they specifically address fevers or chills, cough, shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, fatigue, muscle or body aches, headache, new loss um, of taste or smell, sore throat, congestion, or runny nose, nausea or vomiting, and diarrhea. Okay, so those are some specifics. Uh, but of course, if someone is uh, feeling ill, uh, please keep that employee at home. Uh, please continue to follow the previous guidance, which is 50% max capacity for office spaces. Um, this is based off of the uh, total capacity listed for your, your building, not on the um, total number of employees that you normally have in the office. So whatever the capacity is listed uh, um, um, as 50% uh, or ideally less uh, people at the, uh, at the office. Uh, of course, continue with uh, good signage, um, reminders. Um, so again, um, as far as reminders go, it's, it's good to have uh, this coordinator that's taking charge in your office area and sending out, uh, you know, reminders to staff once or twice a week, uh, frequent uh, cleaning as well, um, especially high touch areas, for example, printers um, uh, should be uh, cleaned on a regular basis, uh, very frequently. Um, and temp checks and wellness checks. If you are an office of 25 uh, people or more, uh, temp, uh, temperature and wellness checks are mandatory uh, every day. Um, if less than 25 employees, um, then you have the option for the employees to, to check themselves. Um, and then that coordinator person is really taking charge with signage, consider having one door for uh, entrance, another one for exit. Um, think about, of course, social distancing, six feet apart, um, try to avoid any kind of congregation around uh, lunch rooms or, or by the vending machines, any, any, uh, any area where people might be congregating, uh, you know, around, try to avoid that. Um, there are checklists on our, on our website as well as the CDPHE guidance. Um, and of course, uh, um, of course, uh, with the coordinator, we're also uh, encouraging mask use, social distancing, and just trying to use outdoor and online meeting platforms as much as possible. Um, so strongly encourage that as well. Okay. Um, 
So some of the uh, commonly questions that have come up with uh, office space is, um, you know, one of them is, is it 50% uh, max capacity or is it 50% of my normal staff? It is 50% max capacity of what is listed according to the, lead, the posted occupancy limits. So that is, that is what we are going by. Um, homemade masks are okay. Um, they're, they're supposed to cover the nose and mouth area um, of the uh, employees. Um, some other questions that have come up uh, regarding uh, manufacturing and retail. Hey, if my office also has manufacturing and retail, how does that fit into this? Um, so there, um, in that case, uh, there are going to be different guidelines depending on the different sectors of the office. Um, if, if your office does have manufacturing and retail, those would have to uh, comply with the guidelines uh, specifically pertaining to manufacturing and retail. Um, so again, there could be, there can be different sectors and different guidelines for uh, if your business has this different types um, within. Um, another thing that came up was uh, high risk individuals. We have to, you know, do they have to be required back? Um, no, high risk individuals are not required to report back to the office. Um, again, with social distancing, um, you know, please, please try to uh, maintain um, you know, that, uh, that uh, you, you can put your, your employees on a rotating schedule, um, but again, it's only 50% max uh, or less. That is what we have at this point regarding the, the state guidelines uh, regarding offices. Great, thanks Lalu. And uh, my name is Amber Sutherland, and today um, I'm gonna be covering field services and manufacturing updates. Um, and so for both of these areas, there were no updates um, in the last uh, Safer at Home update. And next slide, please. Um, and just wanted to talk about some common Q&A field service questions that had come up in the past. So uh, open houses are still not allowed at this time. In-person real estate showings are permitted with COVID-19 measures in place. And occupied properties can be shown uh, with no uh, COVID-19 measures in place. Um, wanted to let you know that we've also had a few tenants reaching out um, just regarding real estate and showing of homes while they're still in the property. Um, and we were basically having them take a look at their lease to see, um, you know, where they stand with having, um, you know, people come in and show the property and then, um, you know, work with their uh, real estate agents to either set up like virtual tours or to you know just discuss the requirements um, for both parties if they're going to be doing showings while you still have tenants in the space. So just wanted to give you um, just an update of you know some of the questions that have come in over the last week. And then lastly, if employees are working outside or indoors by themselves, no face covering is required. So that's just um, the last one on that. Uh, next slide, please, Jesse. Um, and then common Q&A for manufacturing. So um, all manufacturing follow general rules plus um, the May 18th face covering order. Face masks must be worn anytime six feet distancing can't be done. Non-critical manufacturing has an additional set. And then just some highlights from the general rules. And this is kind of applies to all of our areas as well. So uh, WTI's coordinator to address COVID-19 issues eliminate or regularly sanitize any items that are shared between individuals, such as coffee makers, keyboards, et cetera. And then provide flexible or remote scheduling for um, employees if possible. And lastly, always wear masks and then um, maintain six foot distancing wherever possible. Next slide. And then just for non-critical, um, but a good idea for critical too. So no more than 10 employees per room uh, one way flow of work and people. So just considering, you know, using arrows um, and uh, putting signage on doors. So you are addressing the one way flow of work and people and then use imperial, imperial bar uh, barriers between workers whenever possible. So just thinking of, you know, screens and that kind of thing as some barriers between people. And then um, just to showcase some of the sessions that we're covering this week, um, that's included in the slide. And then lastly, if you need to reach us, um, we do have a call center and the COVID biz email for any um, additional questions. And then with that, I'll turn it back over to the chamber for questions.
questions. So Amber, will you go back one slide? Or Jesse, will you go back one slide for, <laughs> for everybody? Uh, so as you'll see, we have just a general um, session on Thursday, which is just Jesse and I answering questions, no presentation, um, you know, providing you opportunities just on Thursdays if there's any changes during the week or anything that comes up. In addition, the Spanish session on Wednesdays, it does change topics, but we have recordings of both a general session cross industry, as well as a food service specific session um, from May that you can use to share with employees if you have Spanish speaking employees. So while we provide all the signage in Spanish, we have a lot of the resources in Spanish. If they'd like to hear um, you know, these rules from public health, um, from other industry leaders directly on one of these sessions, we do have recordings and I will continue to send those out. Um, so I just wanted to point that out about the Spanish sessions because transparency with your employees and vendors and guests has been one of the biggest and best tools that we've heard businesses use um, to increase consumer and employee confidence. Um, so that's just what I wanted to bring up there. So Amber and or Jesse, um, because the checklist is, uh, the manufacturing checklist is mostly non-critical, are temperature checks and, um, and health checks required for critical manufacturing as well? I'm actually not confident of the answer for that. I assume yes. Uh, if you'll give me a minute, I'll look it up now and, and get back to you. But Amber, do you know? I, I'm not sure either, but um, if it's easier for me, Jesse, I can look it yeah, up. If, if you could, that'd be great. Yeah. And then Thank you. Um, if you want to move on to the questions, we can come back to that. Yeah. I know the confusion is that critical has been open all this time and there are very few things, but then the orders had general for everybody and then specific for non-critical. So it might fall under that general for all businesses piece so, and not necessarily just the non-critical manufacturing. So go ahead, yeah. Amber, you look okay. it up. Yeah, I'll just look it up real quick. And uh, uh, sorry, sorry. I think uh, one really good way to look at it is the general applies to everybody, including critical, as far as I've read up until now. Amber will check, but yeah, always consider the general as part of your requirements for all businesses, I would say. Okay, so Amber's talking about that. I know that sometimes we're focused on our industry. So in this case, we have manufacturing or realtors. And I get a lot of questions on what's going on around me. Can I go get my hair cut? Can I go to a restaurant? Can I go to the gym? So Jesse, I know you went through the timeline, but can you give a little bit of an example of the world around us um, that, uh, that the employees are part of, that people on the call may be part of, sure. and some of the guidelines that, that, um, that some of the gui general guidelines that some of those industries are falling under. Yeah. So I think, um, you know, like I said earlier, the situation has been evolving. Uh, you know, the, the governor um, and CDPHE uh, implemented uh, Safer at Home starting at the beginning of May. Uh, and uh, the county followed suit on May 9th. We were more restrictive up until May 9th. And, and that's when we started allowing uh, some limited, uh, you know, salons were open at a certain level of at the time it was uh, 10 uh, people per um, per space um, and uh, and but at the same time when that happened gyms were not allowed to be open um, and a lot of other businesses had to remain closed in the most recent updates um, at the very beginning of this month restaurants were allowed to open um, and um, they're opening at that 50% capacity that a lot of the businesses in these sectors are, are uh, under. And um, they've got to protect their employees and they've got to look at different ways to minimize opportunities for people to mingle. Um, and, and so that's why we're seeing restaurants opening, but at the same time, up until I think it was yesterday or the day before, bars were not allowed to be open under any circumstances. Now they're allowing bars to open if they, um, if they coordinate and, and cooperate with a restaurant or some sort of food service, licensed food service facility, like a food truck. Um, but so salons are open, but there are still businesses that are closed. Um, estheticians have to remain 
uh, closed. And that's that's been something where they're really concerned about their livelihood. And uh, we're, you know, I think the state and the county and those businesses are all looking for a way to open safely. Um, and really, that I think that's the, the key message is that each iteration of the public health order has been uh, based on uh, Colorado Department of Public Health and the, the nation's uh, experts really figuring out what they feel is scientifically valid uh, evidence that it can be open and done safely uh, if the rules are followed. And that's why we, we are so um, seemingly repetitive about these rules in these sessions is the rules are why it's safe to be open. Um, if we can follow those, experts believe that we can, we can continue to, to, to open. So I, I think that's the big message I want to put out there. And I know that Colorado has been, it's been seen that we've, we've moved very slowly, like we're not like other states. But in recent weeks or recent days, we've seen re-spikes in some communities that um, reopened a little faster. Um, in fact, you hear news about Arizona, Florida, North Carolina, where they're, they're hitting numbers higher than when they were in a stay-at-home order um, or before the stay-at-home order. So, you know, I think there's, there's very limited increases, but hopefully we, can, we don't have to go backwards like some states may, um, may potentially go. So uh, there's a little confusion and I, and I get this um, from manufacturers, I get it from offices about, okay, I can be at 50% capacity in my office. Does that mean I can have a staff meeting of all 50% of those people? Can I convene more than 10 people or have a meeting of more than 10 people? Um, you know, even if they've, uh, can everybody come in and go into a room and have a full staff meeting? No. Say that out loud, Jesse. No. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm just so excited to be on a screen uh, and seeing other people. No, uh, you cannot. Um, the 50% the is predicated on the idea that you are still maintaining social distancing. Um, and so that is really hard to do in a staff meeting. Um, and so really consider the spaces that you have in your office. Um, one of the things that's come up in a lot of different industries is, okay, so in, in shared spaces, we have to be six feet apart, we have to wear masks, but what if I'm in an office by myself? What if I've got four walls and a closed door, can I wear, can I take my mask off? And yes, I'm sitting in my office right now, there's no one else here, I have my mask off, uh, but is, if someone were to come in, I'd have to put a mask on. And so that's why I have my mask right next to me uh, because, and this is the hard part, you can't, just like being outside, you can't control necessarily very easily someone coming in, into your office or say there are three people around a conference table and they're all six foot distance, but there are only five chairs in the room and someone else comes in, they're now invading someone's six foot distance. And so that's why those numbers are so small at this point. Okay. Um, let's say you have clients or in, you know, case of a chamber, we have people that want to come in for a meeting. How does that impact your 50%? Um, is that going to impact your 50% or? Yes. Office, uh, people coming into your office are part of that total number. Think of, I, I think the 50% the capacity, uh, the easiest way to think about it is you've got to imagine a big box um, with no with walls, but no you know no furniture or anything like that, and the fire code sets the number of people who can be in that space safely. Um, we're saying you can have, or the state is saying you can have fifty percent of that, and it doesn't matter where they're from, who they are, if they're customers, if they're maintenance staff, if uh, for whatever it is, those people are part of your fifty percent. And again, that's why, as Lalo mentioned, uh, and I think it's really important, like 50% is great, less is better. Um, the, the fewer people you have together, the less chance there is for spread. Okay. And uh, in manufacturing, that's been covered a little bit on the manufacturing floor with shift, 
shift changes and um, you know distancing and changing. Everybody comes in, doesn't come in at the same time, doesn't go to lunch at the same time, doesn't take breaks at the same time. So just eliminating some of the convening pieces and then also um, you know thinking creatively about your your space and use of staff that's in the office. And that that also brings up a really good point about um, if you have staggered shifts, staggered lunch breaks, uh, staggered use of shared spaces, remember that it's really important to clean those spaces very regularly because if uh, your coworker sits in a chair and five minutes later someone else sits in that chair, that's not enough time for the virus to, um, to become ineffective. Um, I'm forgetting the word, <laughs> but um, you need to think about that time uh, allowing for cleaning. Uh, that's the best thing you can do, but also time does resolve the issue, but it's, it's hours. It's not 15 minutes. Amber, have you, are you ready for me? Are you, uh, you ready? Go ahead. Yes. So um, it says that uh, the non-critical, it says conduct temperature checks and the critical, it says when possible. So that's the two differences. Um, so yeah, implements system uh, monitoring protocols where, where possible is what it says for the non-critical and then the critical reads, um, uh, the critical reads conduct daily temperature checks and monitor symptoms in employees and then refer to the CDPHE symptom tractor while at work. Okay. So that's the difference. So while non-critical doesn't have that requirement where it says where possible, um, Right. You know, one of the best practices of the health department and others is to continue to monitor symptoms. And if someone's sick, don't let them come in. Right. Yeah, I still think That's it's the best practice to do on a, you know, daily basis, just even, you know, even if it's, you know, when possible, just checking in with people um, to see where they're at, especially, especially with the outbreaks, you know, to really get a, a handle on that before that happens. So Lalo, you talked a little bit about, we get this question, this allergy season, and they revise the list of, of symptoms. Some of the symptoms to allergies are coughs, sneezes. I mean, I've been on a call with at least four people today who had to get a tissue because of allergies. So the recommendation is if you have any of those symptoms not to come in, or is there a way for them to prove they have allergies? I guess the only way for them to prove that they have allergies would be to take the COVID-19 test. Um, that would be through with a physician, um, but but really, um, but really, when in doubt, um, please have your employees stay home. Uh, you know, according to the those, um, as you can see with the list of those symptoms, some of those symptoms could be confused with allergies, um, and really, without a medical professional there, there's no way to really know. So, when in doubt. Um, have your employees stay home. And um, if they really want to prove that they do not have COVID or they're not um, contagious, then they can consult with their medical professional to get a, a test. Okay. Ambra, is there any way you can put into the chat a link to the location you got that verbiage? Or yes. if that's in the, thank that's you very true. much. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, a question about HVAC systems. I got three emails this week about HVAC systems. Nice. So some companies and offices are worried about, um, or manufacturers, if they can't open their windows, because you talk about the, you know, the proper ventilation, they're worried about, um, you know, the HVAC systems and what you need to do to assure your HVAC system is, is good enough. Do you guys have any recommendations or should we just keep directing people to CDC and the, I think it's ASHA or something like that website? So um, CDC and ASHRAE and OSHA. Um, so ASHRAE is the uh, it's engineering uh, group. Uh, OSHA is the occupational safety uh, and CDC has uh, health guidance. But in, uh, and, and they're the experts. And I, I don't know, Ambra or Lalo, if you have expertise in this, but 
uh, I was speaking with the chief building official for Boulder County yesterday, and he said he repeated what we've been talking about in these sessions since the beginning, which is if you can increase the amount of fresh airflow into your space, that's one of the best ways to uh, clean, clean the air. Um, you really, you can't, um, you can't just throw the highest level, level uh, filter on any HVAC system. So probably the best thing to do is make sure your HVAC system is up to date, make sure it's been maintained, make sure it has new filters. Um, if you are renting in a building, speak to your landlord about if there are better filters that are possible to put on those uh, into the systems. Uh, but really fresh air is your friend. Um, that's why outdoor dining is, is uh, such a popular option right now is fresh air and, and wind breeze is, is gonna, gonna move the virus through a space best. We, we've gotten a lot of, um, let's say, vendors that are approaching businesses saying for $3,000, you can have this deionization system or this system added to your HVAC to kill the virus. Um, should companies beware of some of the, I mean, it's not just HVAC. We have them coming in saying, well, certify your readiness or there's a lot of people out there taking advantage a little bit of the COVID um, crisis. What, what should they, where, where's the trusted source on that? Uh, I, I don't know where the trusted source to find good vendors is. Uh, maybe you all know, but uh, you know, be very cautious. Check those, uh, those government sources, check ASHRAE. Uh, I have not heard of any um, you know, specific upgrade to an HVAC system that will automatically protect a space um, that just doesn't seem likely. Uh, and so I, 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 be very careful. Um, yeah. I think ASHRAE is the American Society of Refrigeration and Heating <laughs> Engineers or something like that. I, I was on the site yesterday because I had a right. lot of questions about HVAC. <laughs> so I'll send that out to this group because it tends to be more the office folks and the manufacturing folks that are, that are worried. We'll send some of the CDC guidelines and they, they've been partnering with ASHRAE a little bit right. um, on some of the HVAC issues. Uh, let's see. I think I'm just gonna ask one more question if there's no more questions that come in and that's about mask wearing. It's a pain. We all, we, you know, wearing it eight hours, you know, and so forth. What are some tips and practices to beware of in mask wearing? Because, you know, touching, removal, I mean, you took yours off. What do you now need to worry about when you put it back on, you know, hand washing? How do you, how do you communicate to your employees the safest tips on mask wearing? Uh, so I, I think um, the both the uh, chamber and uh, the county have posters and uh, tools that can really help with this. Um, in terms of mask wearing, you should wash them regularly if they're if they're reusable. Uh, if they're not reusable, throw them out after. I mean, really after each use, if you can do it. Uh, if they're if they appear clean, you might be able to use them one more time. But again. Every time it gets used, it gets less effective. Uh, hand washing, uh, staying six feet apart, are your best bets. Really, those are the those are the things that are going to protect you. Um, the the um, it touching your face. I mean, the, the great thing about the mask is it it should stop you from touching your face. But if you're using a mask where you're touching your face a lot to try and adjust it, then the mask is not fitting properly. Uh, get a different mask. <laughs> um, and, yeah. And wearing the mask around your ears and under your chin, not yes. covering your mouth and nose is not mask wearing, correct? Yes, yes. It's got to <laughs> be. a lot of calls like, I saw somebody with a mask, but they weren't actually wearing it. <laughs> um, and, you know, those types of things. Just about every store I've been in, I've seen at least a customer and sometimes an employee with it down so that their nose is exposed. <laughs> And that's, you're not doing anything at that point. And so one of the things that, you know, office and manufacturers and real estate and, and all this whole industry has really talked about in previous webinars is getting employee confidence to come back. 
sort of a lot of offices that aren't even operating at 50% because of employee confidence. Um, a lot of the resources that we're providing the people on the call are also resources you can provide your employees. What else, um, what else could you do? What, what are some other things that you can do to, um, to increase employee confidence? Uh, Jesse, yeah, yeah, so, a few things. Yeah, yeah just just on the uh, on the uh, the guidelines, uh, the public health order guidelines for offices. Uh, one thing that you can do is provide your employees uh, with cleaning and disinfecting products, and guidance on daily workspace cleaning routines. Um, you can also, you know, conduct, you know, your standard office cleaning with increased frequency. And you can also, um, you know, post uh, somewhere, somewhere in a, in a visible area, you know, uh, like a, the checklist cleaning to try to instill um, employee confidence that, that, that it is being cleaned on a, on a frequent, um, on an increased frequency. Um, so those are some things that the, uh, that uh, the public health uh, order has recommended for uh, for offices as well. So transparency, making sure that they know that these are the measures. These are the measures that came from public health um, to try to uh, uh, try to maintain our health while reopening. Um, so all of the resources that we send to businesses is probably a good idea to send to employees as well the signage. Um, I did launch a poll real quick um, on some of the things you like to see on future webinars. And Jesse, I think the top one is on infection rates. Um, Lane on the last call talked a little bit about what's going on with infection rates in Boulder County and Colorado, because we're hearing about the, the massive numbers in other states. What's happening in our, in our county? So uh, it, um, you know, and I got this from Lane, so uh, you know I didn't I didn't look this up. I, I was happy that he was on the last call to give us some of this information. Uh, we are seeing uh, low, uh, sustained low levels of new infections, um, and sustained low levels of hospitalization, which are two really big, good signs for us. Um, and and that's especially as we're seeing opening of more businesses. If we can maintain that low level and even see some decreases, then we're headed in the right direction. And uh, the whole the 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 concern that we have to be aware of is if we see spikes, if we see increases, as as Corinne mentioned, other states are seeing, we're going to go back to to stay at home or something less than what we have now in terms of openness. And that's why. Uh, all of these measures are so important. And I think to go back to your earlier question and what Lalo said, like the more we do to show that we're complying, the more confidence there is, the more comfortable people become following those guidelines. Hopefully the sooner we'll be more open. All right, well, thank you. And so with a potential variance in Boulder County, so a variance, as Jesse explained, is something the county would apply for from the state, not a business applying it from the county. So we've gotten a lot of businesses saying, but I'm doing this, can I get a variance? So, you know, hold off on that. We um, will send you out a link to where you can provide some why, where the restrictions are impacting your businesses, um, feedback to the county. They will then submit a variance, most likely in the near future, to the state, and it would be a couple week time frame. So this isn't an overnight thing. But the number one thing we heard on this poll was you want updates on orders. This would probably impact industries. And so on these calls, we'll continue to update you on those changes, allow you to ask questions, and then continue to provide resources that will help you um, follow the rules and the requirements as best as possible, just like the signage. Um, five out of, I mean, most of the people here said they're using the signage, which makes me really happy because <laughs> the graphic designer spent some time on that. I want to thank everybody that attended. I know we, there are several industries, but most of the people on these call have an office. And then there was the additional of the field services and, um, and manufacturing. Continue to attend, ask your questions even between hand. Um, you know, and 
continue to get the resources, provide the feedback when we send you that option, and continue to open in a safe manner so that we don't go backwards, that we're not in a more restrictive capacity in the future. I want to thank Boulder County Public Health. We only had three on today at this call. The previous one had like six. Um, now that we've combined some industries, I want to thank you. You've, you've dedicated a lot of hours. I think I'm on hour 55 of these webinars. Um, and so there's a lot of hours dedicated to making sure businesses are doing this as a safe practice, that our numbers are staying down, that we increase customer confidence and employee confidence, um, and that we can get our economy rolling um, at least a little bit um, more into the summer. Thank you, and I hope everybody has a wonderful afternoon. Thanks, Corinne. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.